All right. I think um, we're going to get our meeting started this evening. So we are on schedule to start it at six o'clock. We're at 6.01. So I want to, first of all, welcome and thank everyone for joining us tonight for the community input meeting on the Stony Point Road Bicycle and Pedestrian Corridor Study Improvement Project. So I am Nancy Adams and I work for the uh, City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works Department as the Transportation Planner. And tonight we're gonna be having interpretation services for the meeting. And that is gonna be provided by Kim Tellez with uh, WTRANS. And the live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. And you can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in the Zoom toolbar that's on your screen that looks like a globe. And Kim will talk a little bit more about that um, when she uh, uh, discusses the, the translation element of the, the uh, community meeting. I will now ask our, uh, our host tonight, who is uh, Steve Brown, and he's also with the City of Santa Rosa, and our translator, Kim, with WTRANS to explain how our uh, meeting will work tonight. Thank you. Steven Kim, please. Bienvenidos y gracias por acompañarnos en esta reunión de la comunidad sobre el proyecto de mejoramiento para ciclistas y peatones en Stony Point Road. Ella es Nancy Adams, la planificadora de transporte de la ciudad de Santa Rosa. Yo soy Kimberly Telles, la traductora para la reunión de esta noche. Esta reunión se puede escuchar en español en el canal en español de Zoom. Puede unirse a este canal haciendo clic en el globo que aparece en su pantalla de Zoom. Steve, would you like to um, explain to the uh, attendees about uh, how the meeting Indeed. works? And yes. next slide, please. And next okay. slide, please, as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Nancy. So as members of the public join the meeting, you'll be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. If you're calling from a telephone and choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting, for privacy concerns as host, I will be renaming your viewable phone number to a citizen with the last four digits of your phone number. Please know the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. We will start the presentation with an overview of the corridor study, including improvement design concepts. As Zoom host, I will be lowering all raised hands until the question and answer portion of the meeting is open. At the end of the presentation, the meeting facilitator will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Once the facilitator has called for public questions or comments, as host, I will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question or comment related to this presentation. If you're calling in to listen to the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. As host, I will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hands raised. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, as host, I will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond to your question. Nancy. Thank you, Steve, for highlighting um, the uh, public participation instructions to, for tonight's meeting. And if I could have the next slide, please. Thanks a moment, though. So um, at this time, I'd like to um, introduce tonight's participants from the city of Santa Rosa and project consultants from WTRANS. De la ciudad de Santa Rosa y a los consultores de WTRANS. From the city of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works de Department, de Santa Rosa, tenemos a... we have Rob Sprinkle, Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering. And from WTRANS, we have Steve Weinberger and Barry Bergman, who will present concept designs for your consideration on improvements to Stony Point Road. 
And then we have Steve Brown, who is our host for tonight's meeting, along with Mary Lou Nichols, who is serving as our co-host, both uh, from the city of Santa Rosa, and they'll help us uh, coordinate the questions and the answer portion of our meeting. And then lastly, um, in introducing uh, again, Kim uh, Tellis with W Trans, and she's providing our, our Spanish translation. So, so, so thank you, Kim, for that tonight. So we're gonna start the meeting uh, tonight with an overview of the quarter study with some proposed concept designs followed by public questions and comments. And uh, I think the presentation is about oh, 20 to 25 minutes. And then um, we'll open it up for questions and comments for uh, the participants here um, on the Zoom meeting with us tonight. I will now turn the meeting over to Steve Weinberger and Barry Bergman with uh, Debbie Trans to begin the presentation. Okay, thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Again, I'm Steve Weinberger, a senior principal with Debbie Trans from Santa Rosa. And um, I'll be passing it to uh, Barry Bergman for the first part of the presentation to give you a background on our uh, uh, study corridor that we're addressing. And then Barry will pass it on to me uh, for, uh, a, we're gonna give you a little tour of our initial uh, design, draft design that we've done to get your input on. And throughout the uh, meeting here, there's gonna be some inter uh, breaks for some quick uh, polls. Uh, that we'll ask you to uh, uh, fill out and we'll get some instantaneous response from that. So Barry, go ahead. Next slide, please, Steve. La siguiente, por favor. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, so this is the study corridor and um, note that the map is turned in, um, in an unconventional direction, left is to the north Santa Rosa's at the top, Sebastopol is down. So that's Route 12 going through the middle and Stony Point Road going left to right uh, throughout there. Next slide, please. Um, there we've got this, the study corridor. Uh, next slide, please. And so here just, uh, we've broken it down to three different segments. Um, we have West Third Street on the left side of the screen. Um, so sex segment one is from West Third Street up to Highway 12. The bridge over Highway 12 is segment two, and then segment three is from the ramps and the Jorodota Trail on the on the south side of Highway 12 down to Sebastopol Road. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, Stony Point, the Stony Point Road Carter has been identified by the city as a high priority. The uh, bicycle and pedestrian master plan update that was completed in 2018 um, selected this as one of eight corridor studies. And it was ranked as a top priority by the pedestrian bicycle pedestrian advisory board because of the high rate of severe injury collisions involving bicyclists and pedestrians. It's also a major north south south access route for what's known as a community of concern. Um, next slide, please. And the, the red line is the study area. The pink areas are the communities of concern. That's a regionally designated um, area and it's based on um, low income communities, high percentage of minority populations, seniors and several other factors. So um, often when projects uh, serve these communities, they're eligible for additional funding. Uh, next slide, please. So here are the um, major uh, objectives of the card. I'm going to read through these kind of quickly. We want to get on to, to share the designs with you, but we want to reduce the number and rate of um, injuries and fatalities, increase the comfort for bicyclists and pedestrians, increase the number of people biking and walking, reducing speeding. Um, but we are going to be looking at maintaining adequate operations for vehicles. So bicycle pedestrian improvements, but we want to take into account the needs of drivers. And a big part of the reason we're here to, with you tonight is to get your input about what is needed and what kind of changes we need to do to modify the designs. Next slide, please. Um, public outreach, this is the first of two community meetings. There'll be an online survey, which you'll be hearing more about that you'll be able to take after the meeting. There will be some social media um, ways of getting the word out. And then there will be subsequent meetings with Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. Next slide, please. Barry, if I could pause for just one moment. Sure. It appears we have a bit of a problem with our translation channel, so I'm going to fix that quickly. Give me just one moment. Thank you, Steve.
Okay, I believe we can begin again. Okay, thanks. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, Steve Brown, I'm going to turn this back to you so you can administer the first question of our poll. Indeed. Um, so, all the poll questions are single and multiple response. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit the submit button is at the very end of the poll, and you may need to scroll down in the polling feature to find it. If you are completing a poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you answer the second and so on. If you're participating in a meeting by landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the complete, uh, complete survey is available in both Spanish and English on the city website at srcity.org backslash corridor studies until December 9th. If you're on the Spanish channel and wish to participate in the poll, you will need to click on the globe icon on the screen and switch over to the English channel. Once everyone has completed the poll and has been closed, the results will appear immediately on the screen and our presenter will walk you through the results. I will now launch the poll. Steve? Hi, Steve, this is Nancy. Can you hear me? I can, Nancy. Yeah, we were just wondering, are you having difficulty with the poll or are you good? It's, is, it's quiet for a while. No, is the, the poll is still up on the screen. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and wrap up our polling. And so Barry, if you would like to review the responses there.
I'm sorry, is that on the next slide? Actually, no. All right, okay. I, can go, I can go through the poll results if you like. It appears that uh, about 19% of our attendees tonight are from 95401. About 7% are from 95403. About 15% are from 95404. About 26% are from 95407. 4% are from 95409. Another 4% from 95472. And we have about 26% of our attendees tonight are from another uh, zip code. The age range tonight, we have about 7% that are 18 to 30, about 19% that are 31 to 45, about 33% that are 46 to 60, 30% of our attendees are 61 to 75, we have 11% that are over 75. Um, of our participants tonight, 41% uh, use bicycle as their mode of uh, primary mode of travel and 59% use uh, automobile. Excuse me, um, Steve Brown, this is Steve Weinberg. I'm getting a report that this Spanish translation is still has problems. If you can check that, I'd appreciate it, thanks. I will do so again. So I, I think this is Nancy, um, facilitator. Could uh, Barry start now back to the presentation? Thank you. Okay, I, I'm not seeing the presentation now. I guess Steve must be still working on the- uh... well, One moment, I'm yeah. again trying to make sure that the sure. interpretation channel is available. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, so we're just gonna walk you through the corridor and then we can get into the proposed designs that, that we've uh, developed so far. Starting at the north end of the corridor, this is just south of the intersection of Stony Point and West Third Street. On the left side of the image is where the Oliver's Market Shopping Center is. And just wanted to point out um, at, on the right side that because of the limited amount of space, there's a turn lane and the bike lane has had to be combined with that. So uh, next slide, please. So this is another um, depiction of what that looks like. You can see that there are two travel lanes in each direction. There are also turn lanes in the northbound direction at the intersection, um, bike lanes, both sides of sidewalks and also landscaped areas. Next slide, please. Um, the second segment, this is on the Highway 12 bridge. Next slide, please. And this is just a breakdown of how that space is broken down. You can see that there are uh, two lanes, three lanes in each direction, um, a turn lane, a strike median. Again, both sides have bike lanes and sidewalks, but there's no landscape strip at, um, because of the constraints of the bridge. Next slide, please. And so now we're at the south end of the corridor at the um, intersection of Sebastopol Road. Next slide, please. And here again, there are uh, turn lanes at the intersections. Um, there's still bike lanes and sidewalks. And, um, uh, and there is a landscaping on, on one side of the street. Next slide, please. So just to summarize, there are some condis consistent conditions that are throughout the three segments, although the dimensions vary a bit. And um, so there's consistently two lanes of traffic in both directions. Um, all of the intersections have issues where they require turn pockets to handle the volume of traffic. There are bike lanes consistently throughout the corridor and sidewalks, um, but the planter strips where there are trees are um, limited. They're only located in certain parts, depending on the section. There's also a median, in some places it's, it's um, landscaped and in some places it's striped. So that's the corridor we're working with. Uh, next slide, please. I'm just gonna go through some of the traffic conditions that we're looking at to, con to consider what we can do with the space. Uh, next slide, please. So um, 
Injury collisions was something we looked at, as I mentioned before, that was one of the reasons this car was identified as a priority. So uh, for bicyclists and pedestrians, 25 injury collisions from the 10 year period 2010 to 2019, 10 involving pedestrians and 15 involving bicyclists. I just wanted to point out that seven of these collisions involved pedestrians um, where vehicles were supposed to yield the right of way at crosswalks and did not. So that's, that's an issue here. Next Carter, please. Uh, this is just a map of where those collisions took place. You can see the, um, the red areas are the highest concentration. So at the West Third Street intersection, the Occidental Road intersection, and at Sebastopol Road. Next slide, please. Um, intersection delay is something we want to consider also. As I mentioned, we want to make sure that whatever improvements are put in here uh, maintain adequate vehicle operations. Um, so the most congestion is at the West Third Street intersection. Uh, next slide, please. And then vehicle speeds, the two places where speeds were measured, the 85th percentile speed below which 85% of the traffic is was at 37 and 37 and a half miles an hour. So that, that was pretty consistent there. Next slide, please. And Steve Brown, poll number two. Okay. So once again, um, uh, all the questions here again are, are uh, single and multiple response. And again, you must answer all the questions in order to submit your response. Uh, the submit button is at the very end of the poll and you may need to scroll down in the polling feature to find it. If you're completing a poll on your smartphone, again, you must answer the first question before you answer the second and so on. If you're participating in a meeting by landline, again, you will not be able to do the poll at this time. Uh, you can, though, uh, complete the survey in both English and Spanish at the city website at srcity.org backslash corridor studies, and that'll be up until December 9th. If you're on the Spanish channel, you're going to have to come back over to the English channel in order to do the, uh, the poll. And um, once everybody's completed the poll and it's been closed, uh, the results are going to appear, and this time they will appear immediately on the screen. I won't have to read them off, and I'm going to launch the next poll now. Okay, very good. I'm going to go ahead and end the polling and share the results with you. All right, Steve, why don't I go ahead and take over this is Steve Weinberger and I'll be doing the rest of the presentation just to review the poll results uh, in terms of uh, people traveling on Stony Point, what their mode is. Uh, we have about half drive, we have about 30% uh, bikers and 20% of all the above. Uh, those that walk in the corridor, um, mo the biggest response was never walk in the corridor or rarely. Um, and then those that bike in the corridor, how often, a few times a week was our uh, most significant response at 44%. And 
the rest uh, about the same type of response. When walking or biking the corridor, what is your destination? The primary uh, response was shopping, uh, which makes sense. 11% uh, work, 22% recreation. Okay, so if we can go to the next slide, please. All right, so uh, we're gonna be showing you some uh, uh, initial uh, thoughts and designs on the corridor. Um, and just to keep in mind that we have certain uh, width requirements we have to meet for travel lanes and bike lanes. Um, and our goal in this was to uh, improve pedestrian and bike facilities, but without, um, without widening. We're trying to make an economical project that can be implemented. So we do have space constraints um, and keep that in mind as we move forward. Next slide, please. Okay, I'll be showing the same cross sections that Barry showed, and then we'll show you some plan views of the corridor. But uh, our first segment, the northern segment south of West Third, if you look at the bottom level, uh, we're proposing to maintain the vehicle travel lanes, and but squeezing out some space to provide some uh, buffer between the bicyclist and the travel lane with some raised element, which we need to uh, determine exactly what that is. Next slide, please. Um, and we will be using green paint, especially in areas that are uh, high conflict zones. This is a sample of what we're talking about with green paint and conflict zones. This is in Sebastopol on uh, State Route 116, just south of Highway 12. For those of you who have seen that recently, there's uh, quite a, a number of areas that use the green paint for to highlight the cyclist position in relationship to drivers where they cross their path. Next slide, please. So south of West Third Street, we're going to we're proposing to provide a buffer between the bike and vehicle traffic. Use color paint in conflict zones, and we're we're creating that buffer by reducing the tra vehicle travel lanes from 12 to 11 feet. Next slide, please. We'll move on to the bridge section and you look at existing above and the proposed below. Again, similarly, um, next slide please. Um, we're providing the buffer, but I did want to point out we are also increasing uh, the number of turn lanes from one to two for the southbound left turn to get on eastbound Highway 12. This is a project that the city has been pursuing. Uh, due to a number of issues. And I'll talk more about that when we get to the plan view. Next sl slide, please. Again, uh, the buffer space with some raised element and we'll be working with the city, especially emergency services on what type of device uh, that can be. Uh, so emergency services can mount over the top if need be. Next slide, please. And, and the green paint, as I mentioned. Next slide, please. So on the, on the bridge, we are adding the, uh, another vehicle lane, but we're able to squeeze out enough space to provide that buffer by reducing the travel lane widths. We've also eliminated the median uh, stripe buffer area that's out there now uh, to get the buffer in uh, over between the bicyclists and the travel lane. Next slide, please. And then finally, the Southern segments, uh, a similar approach with uh, travel lanes being narrowed and providing a buffer. I did want to point out on the left, you see the uh, right turn lane. Next slide, please. This is the southbound right turn on Stony Point to turn right on Sebastopol Road. Next slide, please. Uh, we've, we've evaluated the numbers. One of the uh, our charges we've been given by the city is to make sure that uh, we're not creating a lot of congestion and we do have a high volume of traffic here. So we do need to keep that right turn lane, but we're going to show you some measures we're providing to try to uh, improve the comfort level for cyclists. Next slide, please. Uh, something else we're looking at the Sebastopol Road intersection is what's called a protected intersection. I'm going to zoom in on that corner. Next slide, please. Uh, basically, it's a design. There are there are no um, design uh, installations of protected intersections right now in Santa Rosa, um, but there are places such as Davis, City of Davis, that have been installing them. This one is in uh, the City of Richmond. Basically, the red dots point out raised um, elements that are added to essentially protect 
the cyclist, which would be crossing in the green area and the pe uh, pedestrian and the crosswalk area uh, at corners. And we'll show you how that applies uh, in our design. So for Sevastopol Road uh, intersection, um, as I talked about, we're gonna try to create a protected intersection at least on one corner. Uh, and we're having that buffer space added. Next slide, please. Okay, um, this is our first uh, shot at uh, redesigning the corridor. And I'm gonna walk you through, take you on a little tour of it. Next slide, please. Keep in mind that uh, we turn this sideways, so north is to the left. I'm going to be walking through these segments sort of in that same order, with one being we'll start at the intersection with West Third Street, move on to number two, uh, Occidental Road, three and four, the overpass over Highway 12, and then five and six, uh, the Stony Point Plaza and Sebastopol Road intersections. I'll take those one strip at a time and point out features to you. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide, please. First, the uh, section between West Third and Occidental. I'm gonna uh, basically refer to these numbers and point out just uh, features that we are providing. So starting at one, uh, we are looking for corners that we can increase uh, the curb extensions to shorten that crossing distance for pedestrians and slow down traffic uh, as much as possible for turning vehicles. Uh, number two, that's the right turn uh, that Barry had pointed out in the photos. We are needing to maintain that right turn, but we're gonna be providing some green paint in there to highlight the cyclist presence. Uh, number three, just to show you, um, and this appears throughout the whole corridor, we've squeezed out enough space to provide uh, the buffer area between the cyclists and the travel lanes. Um, this just shows you the striping, but again, we'll be investigating and pursuing some raised elements uh, in that space. Number four, uh, across each of the commercial driveways, we'll be providing the green dashed bike lanes to alert motorists of their presence. Moving on to number five, on both sides of that intersection, you see we've carried that green dash paint through the intersection. And that's especially important on the lower uh, crossing. It's a long crossing through pavement. So we're uh, identifying the path of the uh, cyclist through the intersection. Number six, we've actually uh, redesigned to move that stop bar closer to the intersection. It's actually set uh, further back. It actually shrinks, helps shrink the intersection down, um, which, uh, creates a little bit more traffic calming and hopefully uh, makes it less intimidating for pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, number seven in the top right, we have two pedestrian crossings. This is one of them that cross the loop ramp to uh, Highway 12. And uh, we're gonna be proposing new signage. Uh, we are gonna pursue with Caltrans to see if they would accept a raised crossing. There's one right now at a on a ramp uh, crossing in the town of Windsor. Um, and we're gonna be looking at that uh, for these crossings that we're, we're crossing the loop ramp. And number eight, uh, we're suggesting a, a fairly significant increase in curbing and sidewalk on that corner to both shorten the crossing for pedestrians as well as slowing traffic down that is turning right and getting into that right turn pocket to go onto the freeway so uh, a much more palatable uh, situation for pedestrians on that corner. Okay, next slide, please. All right, we're gonna move on to the Highway 12 bridge section. And next slide, please. Uh, I'll start identifying features for you, starting with uh, number nine on the left. Uh, we do have places where the cyclist crosses the path of vehicles turning onto those loop ramps. So. We're using that green paint to highlight uh, the path of travel uh, for the cyclists. Uh, number 10 is our other loop ramp, same as I talked about before with signage and pursuing a race crossing. Uh, 11, both sides, uh, again, consistent with the other segments, we're providing that buffer space between the cyclist and the travel lane. And you'll see on the east side or the top, uh, we have more uh, excess room there, so we're prov providing a little bit more buffer space there. Uh, number 12, 
Um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the city needs to add a second left turn lane at this location because for several reasons, um, the congestion that it's experiencing and it will allow us to retime the signal here at the Highway 12 ramp intersection to provide more crossing time for people using the Joe Redota Trail. So there is a benefit um, for that use. Uh, number um, 13, again, we're pushing the stop bar like on, uh, that I mentioned uh, in the last segment, pushing that closer to the intersection to shrink the intersection down a bit. Uh, 14, uh, next slide, please. We have a number of things happening at uh, the intersection with uh, the State Route 12 eastbound ramp. And you'll see the green path of travel for the Joe Verdota Trail. And let's go to the next slide to take that green line, uh, line away. Um, okay, and I'll start at A. You'll, for those of you that use the corridor and cross here, know that there is a, what's called a, there's an island meeting there at location A. And that will be removed uh, for safety reasons. Um, so the those crossing don't have to path, uh, cross the path of travel of that right turning vehicle that they do now. So uh, that median's going to be removed. Location B, we're pushing the curb out again as a uh, shorten the crossing distance for the peds and bikes, as well as slow traffic down a bit especially that right turn, uh, making that right turn onto the freeway. Uh, C, you'll see that um, we're providing what's called a bike cross and the green hashed uh, marking adjacent to the pedestrian crosswalk so we can segregate out cyclists from pedestrians. And then uh, D, we again, we have those through intersection markings for the, the bike lanes on Stony Point. And then moving on over to 15, uh, we have two locations again where vehicles are turning, are moving, merging right to get into right turn lanes. So we're using that bicycle markings to delineate their path. Next slide, please. Okay, north of Sebastopol Road, our final segment. And next slide, please. I'll point out these areas. <clears throat> First, number uh, 16. We do have a right turn lane to turn right into Stony Point Plaza. We are investigating whether we can uh, eliminate it without affecting congestion and queuing. If we do need to keep it, uh, we, we have squeezed out enough room to provide that, provide that buffer space between the vehicle and travel lane. Number 17, <clears throat> again, just to point out that we on the uh, segment, we're providing more buffer space uh, throughout the corridor. Then 18 denotes our two bus stop locations uh, uh, in our corridor, and we're providing uh, the dashed uh, bike lane striping where the bus, bus needs to cross the path of the cyclist. Uh, 19, just wanted to point out that right turn lane that we highlighted in the photos, and again, we have squeezed space to get uh, some more room for the cyclists through there. And, and uh, um, there is now green paint that you cross to get in the right turn lane. Uh, moving over to number 20, uh, you'll see the uh, both through intersection uh, bike lane markings as well as a bike cross uh, crossing uh, Stony Point Road there on the south end, to the right side. And finally, 21, we talked about this protected intersection design. And I, I'm sorry, I neglected to mention the light blue color is just to really highlight spaces where we have those uh, curb extensions. I think those of you watching uh, realize that. So uh, here, the light blue is uh, new concrete raised curbing. And we've created that similar design with the uh, ellipse, elliptical shape meeting there on the corner. Uh, as a protection for the cyclist that is changing their uh, path of travel. So next slide, please. So that's our design, and this certainly isn't the end product. This is our, our first cut at uh, using some treatments uh, for this corridor, and really uh, it's our starting point. We want to hear from you tonight on your questions or comments or ideas about the corridor. And before I wrap up, 
uh, and go to uh, Q&A. I, I think we have one more poll and then I have a couple more slides. So Steve, if you wanna go on with the third poll. Okay, I will share the third poll at this point. Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. I did have a uh, assistant comment that they were having trouble do the, doing the poll. I want to remind you that if you did have trouble doing it uh, here live tonight, that you can access all the polling questions at srcity.org backslash corridor studies. That'll be up until December 9th. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and just summarize this last poll. Um, in terms of pedestrian features that uh, people feel make them more comfortable and all of the above was um, followed by the, the flashing crosswalk beacons uh, were the largest vocators here. And then uh, what bicycle features, again, all of the above. So, and um, with buffered bike lanes and dash green striping um, at 11%, okay. So if we can close that and go to the next slide, uh, we just have a couple more slides, then we're gonna go to questions and answers. So, as I said, we really would like to hear from you and your comments, questions, and ideas. Uh, we do, as uh, the host has been mentioning, there is an online survey and a map to go with it uh, to refer to specific locations. There is the, um, uh, the website, srcity.org backslash corridor studies. And if you don't write that down and think about it later, you can always Google Santa Rosa corridor studies and the first item that comes up will be the city's webpage where this project is kept. And uh, the survey questions uh, the, will, are repeated uh, on that website and will be available until December 9th. Uh, which time we'll be uh, collecting those responses. We will be coming back to you with the second meeting approximately in late January, early February. Let's go to the next slide, please. And this gives you the, the rest of our schedule. After we gather responses uh, from you, we'll be going to updating uh, the design further, working with the city to do that. And we're going to report back to the uh, city's bicycle and pedestrian advisory board likely in January and coming back with that update data design to you, the public, uh, like I said, in January, February. And then we'll present that uh, in March uh, or April to the bike and ped advisory board one last time, finalize the design and report and present that to council. So with that, if we go to our final slide, uh, we've come to questions and answers and I'm gonna pass this back to our host. Actually, Steve, thank you. I'll, I'll take over from here, um, Nancy, back um, with the city. So I wanna thank you and, and uh, Barry for sharing some of the design concepts and ideas that you've been working 
with city staff and the bike and ped board um, over the last four or five months. And, and I'm, I'm glad you reminded all of our participants today that this is your, your first proposed set of, of uh, ideas for the, for, the, for the corridor. And you know the reason why we're here tonight and wanna listen to our residents is to see if we're missing anything or just if um, our, our residents have some other ideas that they wanna share with us. So um, with that, I'd like to um, remind the participants how we uh, work through the question and answer section of this uh, Zoom meeting. So I will ask the, our host, Steve Brown, to uh, describe that again, just as a reminder. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nancy. So um, <clears throat> now that uh, we've asked for public uh, questions and comments, um, I would like to ask for members of the public to raise your hand if you do uh, have a question or comment that you'd like to bring up. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, again, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Uh, as the host, I'm going to start calling on members of the public one by one who have your Zoom hand raised. I'm going to un unmute your microphone when I call on you so that you can ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, as host, I'm going to lower your hand and mute your microphone so that our panelists may respond to your question. So at this point, uh, um, I'll go ahead and begin calling on our, um, our citizens. So the uh, first citizen with a with a hand up is Barbara Moulton. So Barbara, you should you should be able to unmute and ask your question. Thanks. Uh, my question is about um, Steve said he, they were looking at maybe could they possibly get rid of a right turn lane at the uh, southbound entrance into the the plaza there. I was wondering what if you could do that. Then what would you do with with the space for bicycles? What would you? How would you arrange that? Thank you. So so thank you, Barbara. Um, just uh, as a reminder, she's asking about the um, uh, the right turn lane into the plaza, and if that's removed, how what what design options would would be available for the bicyclists? So uh, I'll I'll send that over to Steve Weinberger. If Steve, you could re reply to that, I appreciate it. Thanks, Nancy. You know, at any time uh, when doing these projects, any time we can, uh, where we have low right turn volumes, any time we can remove a, a stripe right turn lane, um, just is a better situation for a, a cyclist. It does give us more room for some buffer space. Um, and, but, but again, at the, all these signalized intersections, we're, we're evaluating uh, the right turning volume to see if, if we do take it away, what does that do to traffic operations? Um, because, we, you know, one of our goals here is to enhance bike facilities, but not to create uh, a lot more congestion. So uh, where we do have lower volumes, um, you know, that's where we look at trying to remove them really just to remove that condition where the cyclist is crossing or the, the vehicle is crossing the path of the cyclist. I mean, you still have that um, without a right turn lane, but uh, you just get have and end up with more buffer space that you can maybe create more of a, um, a right angle approach to a cyclist rather than um, sort of a side swipe angle to a cyclist. So just a better situation for cyclists. Next question. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. And our next citizen um, uh, participant would like to uh, ask a question is uh, Justin Borton. So Justin. Oh, it appears, Justin, that um, uh, I'm not able to unmute you because you're using an older version of Zoom. So I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna bypass that and give you an opportunity to ask your question, one moment. All right, thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for unmuting me, appreciate that. Um, my name is Justin, I'm a 
cyclist. I, I commute in this area and I'm a member of the board of directors of the Regional Parks Foundation. And I just have uh, two questions uh, slash comments. First one being um, extending the green paint and buffer north along Stony Point um, to the Creek Trail. You know, it's about 500 more yards um, um, or from the Creek Trail south on Stony Point to the intersection of Third and Stony Point. That seems like a heavily trafficked area and an artery to the rest of Santa Rosa for our cyclists and commuters. Um, and then uh, my second question is the bike crossing that is proposed at uh, 12 and Stony Point, and then also again at Sebastopol and Stony Point, allowing for the left turns. How does a cyclist signal that they need to make that left turn? Are they forced to ride up onto the sidewalk um, and then press the crosswalk? It seems like it would be challenging. Um, it certainly is when it's arranged that way. Thank you, I'll mute myself. Nancy, you need to unmute yourself. Oh, am I good? Am I good now? Right. Now you're good. Thank you. So um, thank you, Justin, for, for those questions. I'll hand that off to Steve Weinberger to respond to them. Yeah, Nancy, did you want to respond to the, I think the first question was about uh, extending improvements up to the Santa Rosa Creek uh, access on Stony Point. Okay, I uh, will ask Rob Sprinkle to address that first question and then you can pick up the, the, the bike crossing one. Steve, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. Um, yeah, Justin, the, that wasn't part of our, our initial um, scope of work for our consultant. That's not to say that we can't look that look into that a little bit deeper as we start to move forward with this with the construction of this project. Um, if it's 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 just a matter of um, doing some of the the paint marking, um, that would be relatively easy. However, if we're looking more at doing the buffer zone, we'd have to dig in to see if we have enough width to narrow those other lanes. Um, I'm not sure if you remember back when those lanes were installed. Uh, initially, we removed the parking along there and and did some lane narrowing in order just to get the bike lanes in to begin with. So if we were going to put the buffers in along that same section, we'd, we'd have to look at the widths and see if we can go down any any narrow along that section. Uh, but we could definitely continue to look at that. Uh, and although we are focusing on this section just from Third Street to Sebastopol with this uh, consultant contract, we still have on our on our bike plan to look along this corridor um, further down towards uh, all the way to college. So it it won't be forgotten if we can't get it with this contract. Okay, thanks, Rob. I think the second question was about um, making left turns, and I, I think the question was intended uh, maybe related to this festival road intersection and the um, uh, the protected intersection possibly. Uh, as part of this, um, the and and we're getting to a concept design level, uh, not a final design level uh, at this stage. Um, but w we always look, you know, when it gets to a design stage and looks at the signals uh, with bike facilities, you're always looking for ways to place uh, uh, push buttons for that are for cyclists uh, that are reachable. Uh, while still on your bike. And if you think about the um, Trevor Dota Trail crossing Dutton, there are uh, both pedestrian push buttons at right at the edge of the curb, but back a ways as you come on the trail, there are there's a conveniently located bike uh, push button. So we're looking for ways to place those in more convenient locations for the cyclists. I actually want to follow up on that just a little bit too, Steve. Um, okay. If, if the question is, and, and I got a little lost in the question as well, but if the question was related to um, making a left turn at an intersection, you could still take the lane and make a left turn at the intersection. The, the protected intersection would be more for a rider who isn't that experienced and who wants to um, take the extra precaution of make, taking two crossings um, for that for, for that movement. So we're not taking away the ability to take the lane and take, have the left turn. We're just we want to provide an extra um, 
sense of security for people's and comfort for people who, who don't want to make that um, more aggressive maneuver. All right, fantastic. Our next, um, our next uh, participant that would like to ask a question is Stacia Okura. And you should be able to ask your question at this point. Hi, Stacia is my wife. I'm on her computer. This is Pat Bailey. Um, I, my, during normal times, myself, my five-year-old, as well as some friends, used the Joe Redota Trail uh, to get to Cesar Chavez Language Academy, a prime, uh, elementary school on, on Sebastopol Road. Uh, typically, we cut through the back parking lot behind all the, the buildings. And I'm, I'm not sure if it can be addressed. I mean, the, the kids range in age from five to 10 years old. So we're certainly not going to put them in open traffic. Do you have any comments or ideas or should we <laughs> keep going around the back of the, of the, the stores? Um, the other alternative, frankly, with kids that age is the sidewalk, which I know is not ideal. Thank you. So, 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 so thanks, Pat, for the question. I'm going to actually um, let Rob maybe weigh in on, on um, you know, with the city, the public right away is, is within our purview. So, um, you know, I, I do know that there are um, opportunities along the Joe Rodota Trail with, um, with some private, with private property. So I'm going to ask Rob to maybe weigh in a little bit on, on what, what his re response would be to that question. Can you let? Sure. Thanks, so first thing that comes to mind would, and, and I'm not as familiar with this section of the Jordota Trail, um, is to use Lombardi, um, come off of Lombardi Court, if that does connect, in fact, to the Jordota Trail, because there's a, the traffic signal there that you could utilize to cross um, Sebastopol Road. So that would be my first suggestion. Um, but yeah, as Nancy mentioned, uh, we're, I, I can't really, you know, focus on the, the, safety aspects of going through a, a private parking lot. So I, I would suggest trying to utilize uh, the Lombardi court, court. Okay, our next participant is Paul Poling. So Paul, you at this point should be able to speak. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, yeah, so I bike with my kids. Um, also the CCLA coming from downtown Santa Rosa. So one of two ways, either we come down the uh, Creek Trail and therefore south down along Stony Point, so across both the um, on and off ramps along Stony Point, or we're coming from Joe Rododo, like the last caller, um, westbound across Stony Point. And so in both of those, what occurs to me is that I don't know if there's some legal requirement that you, that the off-down traffic from the highway is required to be able to go straight across and then go back on the highway again, you know, like if you accidentally got off the highway. Um, and if that's not a requirement, maybe to consider not allowing that. So I just think it might help with the congestion and like the, the way the signals wait and, and how much time they have to allow and all this, and also make it a little safer if they're, if the people coming off or off the highway weren't permitted to go straight across and go right back on the highway. So if they made a wrong turn, they'd have to go and figure out how to turn around somewhere else. Um, so just a suggestion that maybe that would help with that. And just on the point from the last caller, um, so actually no, Lombardi does not go into Joe Rodero Trail. You can't, you can't get it as far as somewhere. Thank you, Paul, um, for your um, thoughts. And then I, I think this is another question that um, maybe Rob Sprinkle uh, from our traffic team can respond to about the operations there at um, Highway 12. Um, Sure. Yeah, the the actual ramp operations on Highway 12, the off ramp portion is actually controlled by Caltrans. So um, if that's a, a movement that we would have to get their concurrence to eliminate that movement, the allowance of going straight across the intersection, we could definitely look into that. I know that, that they have done it in some locations, but they've had resisted to do it in other locations. And at this location specifically, I don't know that there's a high frequency of drivers going across the intersection. Typically when you see that, you'll see that when uh, a freeway is backed up and people want to get off the freeway and get back on ahead of the, the queued traffic. And, and on 
this section of Highway 12, that, that really doesn't occur. So we really don't typically see that as a, a, a high percentage maneuver. And thank you for the comment on Lombardi Court. I wasn't sure if that went through or not. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, participant that would like to speak is Dave De La Fuente. So Dave, you should be able to speak now. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm an avid cyclist. Uh, I work in the area. I'm a, a high commuter on Stony Point, but actually south of this affected area. But I do use the Joe Rodota Trail and go across um, Stony Point fairly frequently. And uh, I'm really excited about what you guys have, have shared already, especially with maybe um, raised um, uh, barriers potentially between the bike lane and the traffic. It's, it's really great. Uh, I'm really happy to see what you guys have got working on there. Working on there. Uh, specifically, my question is kind of back around that Joe Redota Trail um, Stony Point Road interface. Um, the eastbound Highway 12 off ramp that dumps onto Stony Point. The vehicles making a right turn off of that off ramp um, come directly into the, the bike crossing, both the, the current one and the proposed one. And uh, I know that I think there was even a, a fatality there for this same situation. If it's possible, and now I understand it's with Caltrans, you'll have to get it worked out. If while the bicycles have a green crossing light, if there was any way to make the right turn off of the off ramp um, for vehicles to have a red arrow until the bicycle uh, crossing um, light is no longer green, that would be helpful because that's that's always my white knuckle point is coming across that lane, worried about what those uh, right hand turns are going to do, especially when they have a green light, and so do I. Thanks. Thank you, Dave, for that comment. I'll um, again ask Rob to share any thoughts he'd have on that that comment. So thank you, Dave. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Uh, that's a great comment, actually. Um, one of the reasons why we're proposing to put in the dual uh, left turn lane there, as Steve was mentioning, is to give us more flexibility at that intersection. And what I mean by that is if we can get more left turn cars through that intersection, um, through that phase of the signal, it gives the entire intersection uh, more time that we could utilize for other movements. And, uh, and what you're suggesting is something that we could definitely look at doing because we will have more time at that intersection that we can potentially split the pedestrian crossing. Um, and the, cause typically the off ramp goes, as you mentioned with that, um, with that same movement with the right turns and the left turns of the eastbound direction. That's the same time that the pedestrians and bicyclists cross. Um, we have added there a leading pedestrian interval, but, which is where the bicycles and pedestrians are released first um, before it turns green. But as you mentioned, uh, uh, kind of the Cadillac version would be to have them wait for the entire pedestrian crossing at that location. So we'll definitely look into, into that uh, concept. Thank you. Great, thank you. Our next uh, participant attendee citizen that would like to speak is Kevin Heham. So Kevin, you should be able to speak at this time. Well, it appears that Kevin has um, has decided not to speak. So our next uh, participant that would like to speak is uh, Liani Clark. Liani? Hi, yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, you should be able to talk yeah. now. It, it's actually Leilani, Leilani Clark. So, um, so yeah, I am a parent of a second grader at Cesar Chavez Language Academy. And I live in downtown Santa Rosa and we have many times used the Joe Redota Trail to uh, travel to school. Um, I take my daughter on the back of a, a Yuba cargo bicycle and it is really hairy trying to cross that Stony Point um, crossing. Obviously that's the reason for the meeting but I just wanna emphasize that there are quite a few students and parents now using that route probably even more than before. CCLA is a K through eight school. Um, it was previously just a seven and eight. So the student population has increased in the hundreds. 
and um, you know, I see parents and children using that route and young children using that route quite a bit now. So it's really urgent that the safety at that crossing at Stony Point and Joe Rodota is like, at, you know, takes children in mind who might be riding with parents or even riding on their own eventually, um, you know, cause we want it to be a bikeable, walkable area for all the children. So, and then, you know, to the point of, I also have had to go behind Food Max to get over to the school because currently just going between the Joe Rodota to Sebastopol Road on Stony Point is, feels very dangerous on the sidewalk and on the street. Um, so we cut through Food Max and, and honestly, we're not allowed to go behind Food Max. I've been yelled at before by the people working back there. So we have to cut through the parking lot in Food Max, which is not ideal. So anything we can do to make that safe for us getting from the Joe Rodota to CCLA, which is on Sebastopol Road, just um, west of Stony Point is like optimal. It's got to just be done, you know, and, and keeping kids in mind in terms of that crossing and making it kid friendly as much as possible. Um, so that's it. Thank you. I'm excited about this. Thank you, Leanne. I don't know if you had a, a question in your, in your comments, but you have some really um, insightful um, things and to share with our team about, you know, the, who, who's using this, um, for and, and why with, with the children. So um, I don't know, Rob, if you wanna um, add anything. I, I do know that the city has worked in the past with um, uh, the Bike Coalition Safe Routes to School um, program and, and um, for a variety of schools within the city and, and looking at walking routes and biking routes for schools. So I don't know if this would ever be one that the Bike Coalition would be uh, put in their queue, but um, those are also very helpful for helping um, student populations um, access school. So I, I don't really have much more to add unless you have anything else to add on that, Rob. No, I don't think so. But it was, it was good information. Thank you, Lemoni. Okay, great. Our next uh, participant attendee that would like to speak is Sean. Sean, you should be able to speak at this point. Um, I'm basically, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Basically just, uh, just reinforcing what everyone says. Um, I don't live quite down to Stony Point. I'm more in the Dutton, uh, third street area, but also I use uh, the, uh, the Creek trail and the Jorgata a lot. And, um, it's basically not super kid friendly. It's, you know, that's basically what everyone's saying. It's like, there's some crossing points that are like very, you know, the trail itself is very is very amazing. It's awesome. You know, you have nature going right there, but then you hit those streets, and next thing you know, like I have to go like two blocks up the road to hit a crossing point that they might stop. You know, I don't know. I just feel like the trail should be more of a streamlined situation. I don't. I know that's what you guys are working for, but I just again, there's a lot of questionable crossing points in the in the trails. So that's it. And I know you guys are working for it, but like. I don't know if you just make it more kid friendly, <laughs> that'd be amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I, I don't know if the uh, any of the panelists would want to add any um, comments on that, but I appreciate you sharing your, your insights tonight, Sean. Thank you. Okay, our next participant is Sarah Hadler, and she would like to speak. So Sarah, you should be able to speak at this point. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Great. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Hadler. I work with the Safe Routes to School program for the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. So I just wanted to chime in with a few thoughts. Wonderful, um, you know, comments about having this area be more family and kid friendly. We absolutely need that. Um, definitely. And we work with um, Cesar Chavez Language, Language Academy. Um, JX Wilson is another school that's on the corridor and R.L. Stevens, Robert L. Stevens. I think those three schools are maybe the most affected by this. And we have, um, we have student address maps that we can share that um, would, you know, that show how many people, how many potential families could use these crossings. Um, if that's helpful information, we're happy to share that. 
Um, I also sent out, you know, this meeting to the schools I work with, so to garner interest and to get feedback, and we can do that with this online surveys as well. So um, we're happy to do that, and just echoing the the need to make this corridor more friendly for for bicyclists of all ages, for bicyclists and pedestrians of all ages. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, appreciate that. Uh, any of the panelists want to add anything? I, I think those are, are very valuable thoughts. And uh, unless any of the panelists have anything else to add, uh, Steve, I, Brown, I guess we could go to our next question unless anyone else has anything to add on in that. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Our next participant is James Salvante. So James, you are able to talk at this point. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to look at the plan. Um, overall, it looks really fabulous. Uh, and I really appreciate having an, another option to writing behind food max, which I like many others on the call are doing. Um, in reference to that, and folks that are looking to get from the Joe Redota over to, to the school there, uh, the street Bretagne does go through, um, unlike Lombardi. And although that's not part of the scope of the current project, um, I'd like to ask the city planners to consider looking at that as a potential option. Um, it's got good access from the trail and if something could be done about the signal uh, and a way to get safe access from the, the intersection there over to the, the bike lane, it might be a good option for folks that are traveling um, from that side of the trail to get over to the school. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate. Thank, thank you very much, uh, James, for that uh, comment. So I don't know if Rob, did you want to respond on the, the connection there at Brit Britain uh, Lane or, or Yeah, not? sure. Uh, Thanks. Just in, in general, I'm definitely recognizing there's a need for some better connectivity. Um, so we'll be investigating that. Um, again, that's not really part of this project, but that's something we could we could look into. I, I'm definitely hearing the need. And um, so we'll see what we can do to, to help facilitate a little better connection there. All right, great. Our next uh, participant citizen uh, um, uh, is Sean uh, Milani. And again, it appears that you're using a older version. So one moment while I allow you to speak need to go get this snack and to get some of your teeth brushed okay? okay all right you should sean uh milani uh yeah milani you should be able to speak now thanks uh i'm logged in on my wife's computer so uh my name is nick um and yeah i i bike the area frequently um i live in roseland i work in roseland um and I, I really appreciate a lot of the uh considerations you guys have made um i think the protected lanes the raised crossings um, elimination of that slip lane for uh eastbound traffic uh on highway 12 from northbound stony point uh, is going to really make the place feel a lot safer um so i appreciate all of that um and i just had a couple thoughts one is um, when you talk about what's uh, separating uh, the buffered lanes from traffic, um, I've seen buffered lanes, like they built one right here in, uh, in Roseland, actually. Uh, and I think it's mostly for pedestrians, but it's just to get from Sebastopol Road up to where, well, it was formerly the Dollar Tree. Um, and they just get destroyed by car traffic. Um, and so those are just, you know, plastic bollards. Um, so what I'm hoping is that uh, I can put in a good word for something that's more durable, like steel, uh, concrete, something that would actually protect users of the trail uh, from fast moving vehicles. Um, otherwise, I, I don't think it adds much safety um, to, to the current situation of the striped lanes. Um, and then the other thought I had was talking about making this, uh, you know, more comfortable for bicyclists and pedestrians um, is are there opportunities to add trees to these designs? Can we put trees like in medians where they don't exist or in buffered lanes where they don't exist um, in order to, uh, you know, reduce the urban heat island effect, provide shade for people, uh, reduce pollution, you know, maybe planters with small trees in them could be used for 
uh, some of those um, protected bicycle lane areas. Um, I think it would just make the area a lot nicer um, and it would also kind of calm traffic as well. So that's that's my two cents. I um, really appreciate what you guys are doing and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. Appreciate um, those uh, those thoughts. So I think what I might want to do is I kind of heard a little bit about the design that Steve Weinberger presented, um, talked a little bit about trees in the median. So maybe maybe uh, Steve, you could you could um, talk a little bit about that. And then I think the uh, the buffered lanes too, and what type of treatment um, would be used. If you want to talk a little bit about that, and then. I don't know, Rob, if you want to weigh in um, as well, but let's let's uh, have uh, Steve take a, a first cut at it. So thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so in terms of our raised elements, and you know that's something that we're um, uh, between now and the next time we come back to you, we'll have some uh, samples, of photos of raised elements that are used other places that we're proposing here. That's something we, we haven't met with emergency services yet, but uh, we, we really want to get their approval uh, on any raised elements first. Um, so that's our next step uh, with the city. So I, I'm, uh, I don't want to suggest things that emergency services uh, has a specific problem with, but we, we do want for sure to propose um, some type of raised uh, element. Some are, uh, you see from just the, our simple graphics, um, some cities have used just simple uh, rubber poles, but there's others that have used some a more aggressive, uh, some are called, if you look up something called an armadillo, road armadillo, uh, it's, it's a, a road bumper, but uh, very pronounced where nobody would uh, try to, a vehicle would not try to uh, uh, run over that. So uh, we, we do want to look at some aggressive means, but but again, want to meet with the city first. Um, Nancy, can you remind me of the other? Yeah, the, the commenter um, also okay. talked a little bit about trees in, in the medians. I don't know um, if that's something you thought about, but that was his other comment. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we've taken that note down and that's something that we'll look into for the design. Uh, anytime with landscaping and medians, uh, number one, we need to uh, run that by the city. Number two, you need a minimum width to uh, allow trees to survive in a median. So. Uh, I don't know that we have, uh, we, we've been trying to narrow the lanes to get room for these buffered space between the bike and the travel lane. Um, you know, it'd be great if we had more room to work with to uh, widen some of the medians as well. And, and we just haven't had the room to do that. Uh, but there are, as, as you've seen in the uh, draft plan, a number of sort of extensions of curbs uh, at intersections, um, although that that's a nice place to also add more landscaping, we want to make sure that we're not adding landscaping enough that it's going to block the the view of uh, as some you know vehicle now can't see uh, a pedestrian uh, around the corner. So we want to be careful in what we promote there as well. But that's something that I'm we've taken your note down, and we're, we're going to be looking for. Uh, uh, areas to propose additional landscaping and or trees. Okay, great. Oh, Bob, did ahead. you have anything to add on that or are you good? No, nope, I'm good. Okay, thanks. I, All right, thank you. Okay. Our next participant that would like to make a comment is Neil Pinkerton. Neil, you should be able to speak now. Neil? Hello? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I've commuted this uh, corridor hundreds of times in the past few years. Um, and the, the significant, the, the parts where I feel the most at risk, where the uh, traffic has to cross the bike lane. And that's like just the, uh, the on-ramp where Occidental Road crosses um, Stony Point and and also where after the um, 
Well, let me think. It's it's where the plaza, where you go, the, the, the right turn into the plaza. So there's a, there's a separate lane there. But after that, after the right turn into the plaza, after that, that one, there's this, this like no man's land where you've got to hop over from the bike lane to the straight ahead lane, uh, which would be the right turn lane, I guess. And so I wondered what, uh, if you would have, what sort of um, things you'd investigated to sort of like try and make that a, like a safer thing. Like maybe, uh, I don't know what other countries have done. Maybe Holland would be a good thing to look at. Maybe you see what they've done to separate cars and bicycles in terms of how do you stagger the traffic and uh, maybe the lights could be staggered. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do um, between uh, the plaza and uh, Sebastopol Road, but I think the Occidental light, you could have a light where the bike was allowed to go first. And, and then some people were talking about that on the crossing of the road over the trail. You might have be able, you'll be able to let the pedestrians go first and the cyclists at the same, you know, uh, separating the traffic and the, the bicycle and pedestrian sort of have a crosswalk sort of thing there. I don't know what the solution is. Um, I just wondered if you, what other solutions there might be out there to look at. Um, those are the points, uh, aside from everything else that everybody's talked about, those are the two points that I haven't heard anybody address yet. Um, I just thought I'd be uh, interested to hear your comments and uh, uh, it's exciting to see what the progress would be. Thank you very much. Well, th well thank you, Neil, appreciate that. So I, I'm gonna, hand that off to Steve Weinberger to maybe um, respond to some of his um, his uh, comments. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, um, thanks, Neil. And I, I think you may have also recorded those questions in the uh, Q&A, uh, and I've kind of recorded those already. And some intriguing ideas, um, uh, it's something we'll talk to Rob about. The, uh, uh, you know, as Rob mentioned, there's an uh, advanced pedestrian phase, our release where we release the pedestrians first, sort of intriguing concept to apply that to cyclists. And that's something Rob and I will talk about. Um, and you, you mentioned about the, um, uh, the place where uh, the cyclist has to move over and you're down a Sebastopol road. You know, as a cyclist, you're against the curb and now you need to crossover on the other side of that right turn lane. I mean, that that is the national standard for design where you have a right turn lane and a bike, the bike lane needs to be on the other side of it because um, you don't want the cyclists on between the curb and the right turn where the right turn is uh, now co conflicting with the cyclist. You always want to get the cyclist on the other side of the right turn. That that's the standard, the national standard design for that. But with that said, um, you know we've heard a lot of comments tonight about uh, that that side of Stony Point between the Joe Rodota Trail and Sebastopol Road. And um, I'm I mean honestly, you got us thinking, and we're going to be talking with staff about that. I can't offer you any. Um, uh, ideas, but when we come back next time, uh, I, I think hopefully we'll have that issue addressed uh, more fully in the plan. So thank you. Okay, and the next uh, participant is Barbara. Barbara, you should be able to speak to us now. Yeah, hi, this is Tom Helm, Barbara's husband. And in my days of riding a bicycle going across on south on Stony Point crossing the Joe Rodota Trail is hairy. And I think your your improvements are very good, especially getting rid of that uh, island on the southeast of the intersection of Rodota Trail and Stony Point. And also on the southwest it, in your drawing you showed an extended curve out so that the people coming off the freeway to turn right on the Stony Point won't have a sweeping a turn from the off ramp onto Stony Point. So the issue is people getting off the freeway have to adjust to being on the city street. And, and the first thing they're gonna do when they turn right on the Stony Point is cross 
the new alignment of the Redota Trail that you have on your draft plan, the way you separated out the crosswalk for pedestrians versus the, the bike crossing. The bike crossing now is the first thing that a right turning car off the freeway is going to cross. And those people, the, the, uh, the need is to get the people who are coming off the freeway somehow to recognize they have to change their whole behavior once they get onto city streets. And I'm wondering, so that's a comment. I, I think you need to do more even for that right turn off the freeway off ramp on a stony point. Another question, it's just a question, it's not a suggestion, is on Dutton, there's a bicycle crossing specifically. And I think it would be helpful to people to say, what are the reasons for or against a similar crossing of Stony Point by moving the bike crossing south, maybe a hundred feet or so. That's, that's my question, thank you. So, so thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, again, I'm hearing a lot of good, good thoughts and good suggestions for the, for the team. So, um, Steve, there's there's a few things in in there maybe about the the crossing there at Joe Redota and Dutton and and how that could or could maybe um, interface with your design concept. So, do you want to talk a little bit about that? And then again. Um, you know the, the just the crossing there at Highway 12 with with that extended curb and if if there's anything else that you'd want to think about there. So can you talk a little bit more about Tom's ideas? Well, one thing, uh, you know, there was I think there was a suggestion of can't we make uh, the Georgia Trail crossing at Stony Point like the one at Denton? Um, and I'm, I'm looking right now at an aerial of the, the crossing location. And uh, I mean, what, you, what Dutton is, it's more like a mid-block uh, situation uh, than Stony Point, which is essentially attached to the intersection. Um, it, it's, it's an intriguing idea. One thing to consider is uh, in order to, we have right away, um, you know, private property, the shopping centers that are butting up against the trail. And uh, we have actually kind of a, a pinch point there on Stony Point. And to, if, if the trail were pushed, say south, like you're suggesting, now we're into private property. So um, I, that's something we need to be cognizant of in the design. So, um, but with that said, um, we kind of understand the reason for your suggestion and, uh, and we are concerned about that right turning traffic, getting off the freeway um, and introducing, you know, trying to create a, a better situation for the, the bikes and feds crossing there. So we're certainly going to look into that deeper. So thanks. Okay, great. At this time, there are no more hands raised in the queue. Oh, I spoke too soon. Someone just raised their hand. One moment. Okay, it appears that uh, Elizabeth Ridlington would like to um, uh, make a comment or ask a question. So Elizabeth, you should be able to speak now. Great, thank you. I like a lot of elements of this proposed design and I have a couple questions. I know I'll have another, another crack at this because I'm on the city's bike and pedestrian advisory board, but I still wanted to ask some questions now. Um, the first is, I understand that we'll need to talk to emergency services to figure out what's an acceptable sort of barrier um, between the bike lanes and the car travel lanes, but having just Googled the armadillo barriers, it doesn't seem like it's that much better than a curb. I agree that nobody would deliberately drive over it, but I'm concerned about drivers on cell phones and drivers who are impaired and other things. And I think cyclists would feel a lot safer if we can indeed get some sturdier barrier along there. Um, so that's, I think, just a comment on that one. 
Um, then the next, yeah, I have a question, especially about section one, but maybe this applies down in the final southern section two, was whether we can get rid of one or two driveways into shopping centers. Because it, each one of those is an opportunity for conflicts between turning cars and bikes and pedestrians. And the, so the shopping center on the west side in section one has a lot of driveways. So that's just a question that I have no idea what goes into negotiating the closure of a driveway. Then my third thing is at the very southern end of the design, um, they, I think it was marked as 20, you know, improvements 20 and 21 on the map. Um, I couldn't quite see how a cyclist who was going to continue straight on Stony Point across Sebastopol Road would navigate around the modified intersection design there. It seemed like there was sort of a, a barrier that would be in the way of a cyclist going straight south. So those are my three things. Thank you. Th thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so let me see. I'm going to do, do a couple things here. Um, let's see. You had a, a comment about um, just the, the separation. So um, and then number 20 and 21 in the design. So I'll have if Steve Weinberger could maybe respond to those and then you had a question about um, consolidating driveways. So maybe Rob um, Sprinkle could weigh in on that one. So thanks, guys. Rob, you want to go ahead first? Yeah, I'll go first. Sorry, I couldn't find my mouse. Um, I've never closed a driveway uh, for a private property before, so that would be something new. Um, however, I think there may be an opportunity to do that. Uh, they are requesting that they have a new driveway on Occidental, I believe. Um, so that may be an opportunity for us to close one on Stony Point. So I'll, I'll definitely have to look into that. It kind of falls into the planning economic uh, development uh, section, but I think um, this being a high priority co corridor for us, we could definitely uh, look at, at entertaining that um, as an option. Okay, and uh, your your question about the southbound cyclists on Stony Point as they come to that protected intersection, you're right that there's not a clear path for the cyclists. The cyclists would need to come into that uh, um, protected area and then um, essentially come into it and then make a right turn to continue south on Spasville Road. That's, that's the downside of sort of the protected intersection design uh, where you don't have a ton of room to, to play with in that you, you do force cyclists into those zones as they continue straight. But um, honestly, you know, we took a first uh, cut it at we wanted to show this to the public and uh, we'll be spending a little more time with the design on that to see if we can improve upon so thanks for your comment okay great and again that appears to be the last of the hands that were raised I do have a couple of comments that were sent directly and I'll go ahead and read those and see if there can be or if any response uh, is uh, needed for those, or if you want to make any response to those. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the comments is, um, there's an existing problem that seems to not uh, be addressed here is for cyclists eastbound on Joe Redota. There's a conflict with vehicles exiting eastbound Highway 12 who want to turn right south on Stony Point across the cyclist path. Many vehicle operators fail to yield to cyclists, especially those who arrive at the intersection after the signal has allowed bike and pedestrian crossing. Perhaps a vehicle right turns need to be prohibited wherever bike or ped crossing is allowed. And that's from David McQuaid. And I think, Nancy, I think we've been, we've discussed that okay. already. Nancy, do you agree? I, I think so, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, and um, let's see. 
one other question here or a couple. Uh, would it be possible to make the Redota bicycle crossing at Dutton have an audible signal? At, at Dutton or at Stony Point? So yeah, is that, that, was, that was my question. Mm -hmm. It just says, would it be possible? Yeah, it says crossing at Dutton. Okay. Uh, would it be possible to make that an audio signal, an audible signal? And okay, that appears to be the comments that were sent directly. So that is the end of the comments and the end of the hands up. So Nancy, do you want to take us forward from there? So I, I guess I just a, a a process question. How how are they? I know there was a, a, several questions that panel or panelists that participants put in the Q and A tab. Are those um, going to be handled separately by the, the consultant team or, or how, how, Steve Brown, do we, we handle those? Um, I just wanna make sure that we're, you know, we're doing a proper, um, addressing Definitely. these properly for our mm -hmm. residents. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, there are a number of questions that were uh, repeats of what was said uh, uh, during the comment section while the hands were up and they were speaking. Uh, I tried to just read the ones that, um, hadn't been already spoken. But uh, as far as answering them live, uh, that would be up to however you wanna address that, Nancy. Yeah, Nancy, I, I have been following the questions. A lot of them were uh, repeats uh, than people voiced their uh, questions. I, I have recorded all, all those questions and uh, we'll keep a record of those and respond to them um, via the, the city's webpage if that's okay. But well, I that's fine. I just want to make sure that the, the residents knew that your team, Steve, um, you know, saw them and that you would, yes. uh, you know, include those in your deliberation as you, as you move forward with this. So yep. um, got them all, you. all uh, recorded Good. down. Okay. Good. Perfect. Okay. So um, Steve Brown, I think we're um, at the, the end of the question and answer period. Is that correct? So I just want to say um, uh, to the um, to the to the residents who came out tonight. I'm I'm really very um, as long as well as the team here um, on this Zoom call. Just really happy to see such great participation um, on this um, community meeting. It's 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 really encouraging to, to know that there's uh, so many residents who um, want to really make Stony Point Road a, a better place for uh, cyclists and, and pedestrians. So I, I want to I want to thank thank um, the, the participants really first off. And then I want to thank um, all the um, the panelists um, who um, responded to the questions and um, wanted to make sure that um, you know we were engaging with with the with you with the residents um, tonight. So um, I I um, I'm happy to um, say that we're we're glad to be able to have a chance to listen to your insight and your comments, and we want to continue to hear from you. So um, as you've heard before, um, our city website. Uh, srcity.org forward slash uh, quarter studies has additional information about what Steve Weinberger presented tonight. That PowerPoint presentation will be posted on that website. It'll have a link to the survey. And it, again, it's open through December 9th. So share that link with your, with your friends and neighbors who might not have been able to participate tonight. And I want to say again, thank you um, all for for being here tonight and um, have a good evening. So thank you. <laughs>